Just before we begin, this video is sponsored by Team FIFA. Team FIFA is an online payment platform that helps sports clubs with the management and coordination of their sports club. Team FIFA supports thousands of clubs, coaches, players and their parents. They are there every step of the way for both club officials, players and parents. Their account management and customer service is what makes them the number one sports management platform in the world. Manage your finances, assign people to roles at the club. This is an ideal tool to keep on top of your club management and admin. It couldn't be easier. It's a simple, efficient system to keep on top of your annual fees, whether it's collecting subs or monthly payments, managing finances for club trips, etc. Team FeePay is the way to go. Book in for a Zoom demo at teamfeepay.com to get a look at how the features work with a reliable member of their team. Check out teamfeepay.com. The link is in the description. Here we go. Hello, Michael Doyle's Football Fan TV. I am delighted to be joined by Republic of Ireland international and Hearts midfielder Aaron McAniff. Aaron, looking very snazzy there in a hotel. How are you keeping? Hello, Paul. All good, all good. Thanks for having me on. How are you saying to yourself? All good, all good. As, as well as we can be in lockdown, although I will say the sun is shining and it's nice and moderately warm here in Dublin. How is Edinburgh? Uh, I, the sun's came out today, to be fair. Uh, it's been had a bit of snow over the past week or so. Um, so since I got here, it's been it has been freezing to be fair. But um, hopefully that's the end of the snow and and the sun stays out for a while now. Yeah, Dublin's been like that to be fair as well. But I know Scotland can be absolutely Baltic. Um, but yeah, we said we'd get you on. I've been trying to get you on for I'd say about two and a half years now at this rate. But we finally have you on. So I'm gonna go just take you back to the very very start, your early days in your career. And if you can just talk me through then to where you are now. So we start, I suppose, your early days of your career and kind of what was your earliest memory of football and then what kind of got you into it? No bother. Uh, so, like, early, the earliest sort of memory I would have of football would be um, I started playing when I was maybe around seven or eight. And uh, it was for a team called Don Bosco's in Derry. Um, and the earliest sort of memory from from that stage would have been I played a game uh, out in a place called Arden Moor in Derry, and uh, I, it was there was hail, hailstones, um, wind, pitch was muddy, uh, barely touched the ball, and I think we got beat about fourteen nil. <laughs> so uh, that that was probably my earliest earliest um memory from football and uh maybe that's that's why i loved it so much i don't know but um now i went on to play for don bosco was then for a number of years uh played with them until under 14 level um and like within that sort of period we we had like a trip away to italy um which was a really good experience uh played against a few italian clubs over there um, and we actually stayed with like host families and stuff, so that was a good experience. And like, I would still speak to some of the coaches and stuff from from Don Bosco's. Um, it's a a good youth club uh, in Derry. Um, my two brothers were involved there at a young age as well. And I think at at under fourteen level, the team that I I was with at the time were kind of folding. Um, so I had to I had to move on, and I actually went. To science was for a brief sort of loan period at the time. I only played a few months there, and then I joined Maiden City Academy. Um, was at was at Maiden City for a year. Uh, played in like the National League, National Youth League up uh, in Northern Ireland. Um, we actually won the league that year, and I think we won the cup as well. We had a great team. It, we, there was a lot of us involved with the. The youth international setup and stuff, and then um, we after that I signed for institute, and then that's sort of when the senior career sort of kicked off. Just to go back to um, you know your earlier days when you were watching football. Now I know you were beat fourteen 0 but did, from that game, did you did you take anything from that? I was like, right, well, next time I play there, I'm, I'm gonna you know smash them or, or beat them or whatever. And also, did you have a hero? of yours who you kind of modelled your game on, you know, growing up or anything like that? Um, 
to be honest, like I, I didn't think about football in any sort of way from that day. I just sort of went out to play, and I, I remember just standing on the pitch freezing, not really knowing what to do, sort of thing. And um, I think the team we were playing had a few overage players and that, so I think that's why the scoreline ended up what it was. But uh, I wouldn't really, wouldn't really took much um, interest on what I had to do. Um, on the pitch, what I could do better and stuff at a young age. Uh, it was just always a case of going out and playing and enjoying, enjoying myself. Um, I know now with uh, setups and academies and stuff, there's a lot more focus on, on players from a younger age to, to be able to sort of improve from an early age. But for me, back in the back in that time, most of my football would have been played just on the street and with me, with my mates on the street, and then going to football training and playing matches, but it was all just a matter of enjoying it and and not taking it too seriously. In terms of like a hero, I was a United fan, like so uh, around that stage. But I watched like the likes of Roy Keane, Paul Scholes, um, Ronaldo. Uh, then you like had Ronaldinho at that time. Um, what a player! You know. That's what I mean. Ronaldinho sort of would have made you anyone fall in love with football. And I remember going out to the street and you play with your mates and you'd say, "Oh, I'm being Ronaldinho today." So you you have to try and do a bit of skills. Someone else would be Roy Keane, so he has to smash you with a few tackles and stuff. You know what I mean? So that was that was kind of my growing up and and football. It was never the way it is now. You know, with a lot of clubs with academy systems um, where kids are are getting really good coaching from a young age and stuff I, I never had proper you know like an academy system at Don Bosco's the coaches were really good um they were volunteers at the time and give up a lot of time for us um but it was like two nights a week you know and um if you compare two nights a week you know obviously with the, the young boys at Rovers I would have seen um them boys being four or five times a week in training um but as I say, I went to training like twice a week, game on a, on a weekend. And then it was just a case of uh, playing football on the street. I think that's missing from today. I don't see a, a, as many kids out on the street playing football and stuff like that. And, and that's where you pretty much hear of a lot of the, I suppose, skillful players. And what they always did was was always street football. Even, you know, you could take our own case, the likes of Andy Reid and uh, Wes Hulham, for example, would be kind of flair players who always played on the street type of thing and that was their kind of upbringing as you, as you mentioned but just to take it to institute and a former teammate of yours was in touch with me sean roddy um he set you up <laughs> for a know, goal do you know big rod i do yeah you sent me a message last night what he obviously he he's um a roommate of shane duffy's over in brighton isn't he so ah uh, yeah what a guy i actually seen him on holiday last year or was it not last year the year before I seen him when I was on holiday. I was chatting to him. Um, Big Rods was a legend. Like, kind of looked after me, sort of going into a men's environment and stuff. There was a good group of lads at that time in the in- Institute change room. Uh, Paddy McLaughlin was the captain. He's the couple manager now. Um, and I would still speak to a lot of them, to be fair. Um, but that, that goal that Sean Roddy's um, talking about, we uh, it was the last game of the season. And... Roddy was on corners, um, and there was a one of the fans uh, said or before the game, right? I'll give you f- give fifty quid whoever scores the last goal of the season, and um, Roddy he pinged the f- a corner uh, to me on the edge of the box, and I hit it in the volley, and it went in the top corner. It's one of the best goals I've ever scored, to be fair. But uh, I was I was as a young boy, I was straight over to the fan after looking at me fifty quid. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did mention the goal. He told me to. He, he told me to make sure that I mentioned it to you, and he said that you uh, knew that you were going to go on to better things after that. I will. Like, I mean, it sort of it filled me with a lot of confidence, you know, playing in a first team environment as a as a young boy and being in the mix with like the likes of a first team banter and um, you know, you learn very quickly because you're thrown in at the deep end and you have to. You're obviously not as physically strong as as a lot of fellas, and you have to, um, I suppose, use your body 
um, and manipulate the ball in a way that worked best for you. And I think I, I learned that, obviously, that year that I, I broke into the Institute team and um, it was a great learning curve for me. Yeah, well, so it, was it from Institute you went to Spurs? Did they scout you from there or how did the, the move come about? Uh, so when I uh, play, I was playing at Institute, and I actually went on trial with um, I actually went on trial with Kilmarnock uh, around the January February time, um, and Kenny Shields was the manager there, and then he he they they he said he wanted to sign me, which was obviously interesting then because I I played under Kenny Shields, um, but uh, whenever Spurs obviously came in and asked me to come on trial, um. Going over there, I mean, it's a, an opportunity of a lifetime for a young boy from Derry to, to go to such a, a big club. And I went over on trial and um, was just really excited. Uh, weeks training went well, and then they asked me to come back to play a game, play the game against Aston Villa. And then after that game, then they, they offered me the contract. So, I mean, it was unbelievable feeling really for for a young boy from Derry to be going to one of the biggest teams in the Premiership. What was it like then your, your time at the club? Talk us through you know how it was because was it a bit daunting for you going at what age would you have been when you when you first went there and were you on your own? I moved there on my 17th birthday and uh, I moved on that summer they were Spurs were just moving into the new training ground so um, I went on trial, obviously, to the, the older training ground than um, the new one in Enfield. Moved in that summer. And uh, like for me, going in there, you know, it's, it's completely different. Uh, you've got the best pitches, best facilities, gym facilities, changing rooms. Um, everything just seems so big. And, and living in London, obviously, a massive city as well. Going over there myself, it, it was um, it was very hard to sort of settle straight away uh, because everything was really big around you, and then you'd be going to the canteen and seeing the first team players that you've been watching a few weeks ago on the TV. You know, it's it was daunting as as you say, and uh, it definitely took me a while to settle. How, how was the experience then? Because um, you know, I'd imagine you'd have been the only lad from Derry, as you said. There yeah. was Robbie Keane there at the time, or or the Irish lads who maybe took you under the wing. Uh, Robbie Keane wasn't there at the time. Uh, there was one other Irish lad there, Kenny McAvoy. Um, he was a winger. Um, he actually, I think he had a brief spell at Waterford in the League of Ireland. Um, at one stage, but uh, he was there, so got on quite well with Kenny. Um, but in terms of first team players, don't think there was any Irish players there at the time. Um, but you know the staff, the staff there were excellent in terms of like, you know, asking you how, how were you and stuff. And a lot of the boys, I, I got on well with the players and stuff as well. Um, but the hardest part for me in my first year there was that I didn't get didn't get international clearance for around six months. Um, so I couldn't play a competitive under eighteen game for about six months. All I could play was in the friend friendlies. Um, so it was a bit, uh, it was a bit annoying, not being able to play the competitive games. You know, you're training with a squad every week, and then it gets their weekend, and all the lads are playing a league game, and you have to play like a friendly game the next day, or maybe on that day. You know, and that that I find that hard uh, for the first six months. But then after that sort of period, um, and I got playing and stuff, I, I started to settle more then. That must have been very annoying in, in regards to the fact that you would just be training, and at that time, mm. I imagine your you you know they're your key years for development, and you'd want to be playing and testing yeah. yourself at that at that stage. So that was obviously kind of holding you back a bit. It was it was a case of you know I I didn't really know much about it. Uh, done the full pre season, uh, I was doing well in pre season and um, played games and stuff, and then. I think it was the t two days before the first sort of league game, um, under eighteen league game. Uh, it was Alex Singlethorpe was the under eighteen coach at the time, and he he just rang me and said, um, 
your claims hasn't come through yet, um, you can be involved this week. So, you know, I was a, I was a bit gotten to be honest, and uh, then I thought, well, how, I said to him, how long would it take? And he said he's not sure, but hopefully it'll be quite soon. And then, you know, for that they roll on for six months. So it was about, you know, what's going on here? What, what's the point of me being here at times like? But. Um, I stuck with it, just uh, trained hard, and um, then obviously when I I got the chance, then and the it was around, I think January or something like that. I played, might have been late December, January. I played my first competitive game, so it was hard, you know. When as I say, when you're training with uh, the boys every week, and then you can't play the game, it, it's hard, and it it can sort of affect your development in them years, but. Um, I just sort of had to get my head around it and get on with it. Yeah, so how, how was the the rest of your, I suppose, time at Spurs then? Because obviously you came back home. So how was the rest of the the duration then afterwards, after you, you could play and stuff like that? So I played then, you know, the rest of that season. And uh, it, was, it was all right. Like I was in and out at times and got a, a good a good number of games. Um still sort of in a settling in period as such because I only had really a few months until the end of the season to get, get in the team and get playing every week. Um, but I was definitely improving as a as a footballer, you know, with all the training and stuff. Then went home for the summer, came back, and then the next year I was involved with the under-21s at the time. So that would have been Tom Sherwood, Chris Ramsey and Les Ferdinand. Uh, they were the three coaches taking the under twenty ones, and their their training sessions and stuff were were excellent. Um, started to train a bit with the first team and stuff, but I remember around Halloween, just going and asking Tim Sherwood, like you know, how do you think I'm getting on or whatever? Because uh, I I only had that year on my contract, and I asked him uh, how how was it getting on and stuff and. He, it was actually great how honest he was with me. He, he said, um, look, uh, if this was March time this year, um, to put it blunt, like you'd be getting released because uh, I think you can do this, this and this in terms of working harder, getting better, um, sort of showing a wee bit more fight maybe. And he was just brutally honest with me. And, you know, as a young boy, that was hard to take. But uh, I went home for the weekend got my head around it and went on the training on Monday like a different player and um, it sort of drove me on and from that day uh, I was just hungry to do well I suppose and um, I played every game, I was playing every game for the 21s uh, up training with the first team and stuff and that was sort of my best period um, at Spurs, got offered a, uh, a professional contract as well then in around March time um, so, you know, it sort of showed that I, I, that I flipped the switch sort of thing. And uh, I'd be very grateful for Tim Sherwood actually telling me that and having that honesty because um, sometimes in football, um, honesty, you know, you, people can butter up things and, and not really get straight to the point. But he was excellent in terms of just giving, giving straight to the point and uh, it helped me massively to sort of realise what I had to do. Um, so the rest of that year was very good, and then my third year there uh, started pre-season, went okay, and just as the games were going to start, got a bad knee injury, and that put me out for about, say, about six months. Um, so I mean, you're losing six months of development, um, and there was obviously lads progressing at that time. Uh, one being Harry Winks, you know, he's an England international. And you know, he's a great footballer. Josh Onoma was coming through at the time. Um, and, it, you know, it's hard to come back from a six-month injury and, and say, look, you know, give me another chance or whatever because uh, there's there's so much talented players at the club already. And they they just said, look, there's nothing here for you. So that was kind of the end of it, really. Um, but, I mean, within the whole period as a whole, it was a really good football education for me in that, I uh, I learned a lot technically and tactically um, and it sort of it helped me become mentally stronger, you know, being away from home from a young age. 
yeah there's a, there's a couple of things there to kind of talk about there and it just obviously it must have been massive for someone like Sherwood who is a Premier League I think he was the captain of Blackburn when they won the Premier League and um, midfielder right. like, giving you advice and stuff like that and for him to come out and say what he did that's obviously massive for you but you also from calculating it there you know you missed out on basically a year's development through injury through the international clearance as well so in many ways you were very unlucky it's a very ruthless business football especially at the, you know Premier League clubs and so on I suppose you learned that very early days as well no, I would definitely describe you know football as a, as a ruthless business and it doesn't wait for anyone you know like if you if you get an injury or if you're not playing well you know there's always the next one coming for you or there's always the next one waiting to take your your place and that's just the that's just that's just how it is really like and um i suppose that's why it's for me the best sport in the world you know because continuously it's a conveyor belt of of great players and um if you're not doing the business someone else will and especially at the the top clubs in England you know they're they've got the pick of the players from all over the world now and um you know the standard of of the youngsters at at these top clubs are unbelievable yeah, I mean, you, you actually have a brother, as actually playing at Arsenal at the moment. Did you have, you know, discussions with him before he went over and kind of what he should expect and stuff like that? Uh, he, well, like, he, um, he would have came over to visit me. Uh, and then he actually came on a trial at Spurs whenever he was younger. Um, and I was still there. And he kind of got a, a taste for it a wee bit younger than, than I would have. And he obviously would have seen the experiences that I went through um, and to be fair I talked to him most days on the phone and stuff so um, hopefully hopefully it helps him a wee bit but um, you know like having that sort of wee bit of advice and that I'm sure I'm sure it does help yeah well just on, on obviously coming back did you kind of have a I, I find a lot of players that go to England they kind of fall out of love with, with the game did you have that a bit or were you just I want to get back. I want to try and play for the club. I want to try and rebuild. What was your kind of mindset at the time? Because you would have been only, I would say, nineteen, twenty around that time. Uh, around younger. that age, I was. Um, and like, you know, coming back, I went on a few trials and stuff. Um, did the likes of I went to on a trial with Sheffield Wednesday, uh, Nottingham Forest, Birmingham City, um, and then the last one I went to was at St Mirren and you know you're you're going around from club to club and you know the the realistic sort of uh contract that you're going to be offered at that time is is maybe a one year deal somewhere um uh because you haven't played so you haven't played many games um and no one really is is willing to put that sort of faith in a young player that hasn't played many games has had injuries um, so I, I just sort of said I'll come back home, train with uh, Derry for a week, and sort of see see what happens, see if anything else came came about. Train with Derry for a week, and then just between myself and, and my family and that, I just just sort of knew that it was the best thing to to come home and um, press the reset button, I suppose, and and get myself right, sort of mentally. Obviously, we dealing dealing with uh, getting let go and stuff, and then and sort of just going again because you know you're you're going to have these setbacks in football and um that that was sort of the idea behind it and as well like Peter Hutton, the manager at Derry at the time, he uh, he told me, look, you sign here and come in and play games and stuff, and I mean that was it was excellent before you hear that from a manager and hear that actually someone wants you because that's a big thing in football um as a player if if you know someone wants you then i think it's it's a good thing yeah i think i suppose it brought you back to to playing you know men's senior football yeah. at a competitive level more so than say no. the 21s or the 23s or something like that so i suppose in a way for your development it would have really helped you you went on well i have on wikipedia you went on to have 25 goals in 102 appearances and you seem to really you know build back up your reputation as one of the best midfielders in the league of ireland i well like it took me a wee while to settle in at derry um 
like the for the first few months of you know from the summer to the end of the season uh i was I sort of in and out of the team and uh there was maybe a wee bit of expectation and stuff because you know you're coming from spurs and um like you know i'm not coming from spurs first team i'm coming from an academy team um so making that step to senior football again uh, is completely different and like the standard in the league of ireland for me i think that it's a very good standard of football and there's some great players in the league so it, it took me um it took me time to adjust but when i had that off season um i worked hard throughout that off season um and then sort of came back in fresh for pre-season and that's sort of when I got going in the League of Ireland and sort of kicked on from there. Yeah, there, there was genuine interest for a couple of years though. I think, you know, the top clubs were lofty and stuff like that. And I, re- I say that in terms of Dundalk and Shamrock Rovers. Um, I've always seen your name linked with them in terms of transfers and stuff like that. So, is it always been a case that you've, you've kind of been wanted by clubs? Because like even with Shamrock Rovers, you know, I heard uh, Stephen Bradley saying in a press conference there was clubs after even still just gone recently. So is that always been a kind of tell of your career that if you started doing well, there's always been quite good clubs after you? I well, like, I, I think, you know, um, the way football works is that, like if you're playing well, you know, you're going to generate a bit of interest for yourself. And uh, if, you're, if you're not playing well, then nobody's going to ring the phone, I suppose. And... Uh, a big thing for me was, you know, always sort of, you know, never get never get too high and never get too too low, and that's sort of one of the things that I would have learnt as a young player in England. Um, and taking that back to you know playing in Ireland, you know, when when the going's good and stuff, never get too high about it, and whenever you've had a few bad games, never get too low about it, and I think it sort of stood me in good stead. They sort of think like that. Um, and in terms of in terms of clubs, you know, as I say, if you're playing well, that you know, there you're going to generate a bit of uh, interest for yourself. But um, I suppose at times there there maybe was bits of interest. Uh, but for me, you know, I was going through a good sort of period. I was playing every week at Derry, um, and I thought that that's what was best for me at that time. Because I had my family around me, uh, playing every week. Um, Kenny Shields, you know, he had a he had good faith in me. They they go and play every week, and I think as a young player, that was really good, really good to get the opportunity to play uh, a lot of games. Because you know you can do all the training you want, but you're you're only learning your trade and in, in the games and uh, getting getting as many games as I could for Derry City at that time was was massive and. Um, it definitely, you know, helped me sort of deeper progress into the player I'm now, like I suppose. And I think at there was one summer one though, uh, when I was at Derry, um, there was a bit of interest from teams in England. Um, I didn't go, and then uh, obviously went to Shamrock Rovers then at the end of that year. Yeah, just just before I move to Shamrock Rovers, when you grew up as a young lad in Derry, did you envision yourself playing for Derry? Would you have gone to the Brandywell and stuff like that? Did you always see yourself as maybe one day playing there? I would have liked it, to be fair. Uh, the Derry, I would have ha- played for the younger Derry teams at the time, um, you know, whether it been the Derry and District and the Foil Cup or else like the Derry City Academy. Um, you know, there was nothing obviously like the you know the national league now they've got the under 13s and 15s um yeah there was nothing like that but i mean there was a case of being a young lad and and getting all your dairy city training gear and stuff and you know you would have been buzzing about it and even getting your your wee match pass for the games to go to the brandy well on a friday night that used to always go to the games um and like you know it would have been Sort of, you would, you always would have loved to go and go on and play for Derry, and you know that was a, it was a big thing for me, and probably the biggest thing for me was to go win a trophy there as well, um, because I suppose as a footballer, you know everybody wants to win things, and uh, I got the opportunity to do that, and they do it in the Brandywell as well, which was really good, and um, look, I, I obviously was a Derry fan growing up. 
went to uh, one of the FAI Cup finals in in Dublin. Um, but then as football as football goes on, uh, I seen an opportunity when Shamrock Rovers were interested in me to go and progress my career, and um, I I definitely think I, I made the right decision at that time. Yeah, you signed obviously Shamrock Rovers uh, around the same time as Jack Byrne as well. But uh, what was what was it that drew drew you to Shamrock Rovers, Stephen Bradley? What did he say to you that convinced you? Uh, was it him and his staff, or just mainly him? Um, so like it, the where was it? It was near the end of the season and stuff, and um, I was out of contract. So I'd spoke with uh, Stephen Bradley, um, and then I went down to Dublin three times. Um, once I went down with uh, my fiance Ellen. Um, the club put us up in a hotel, um, got a look around the facilities and stuff. Um, you know, it was Stephen Bradley and Steve McPhail that were there. Uh, they sort of laid out what their plans were for the club going forward, what they'd been building over a period of a few years. And, you know, it just got a really good feeling straight away when I met them. Um, the facilities at Roadstone are excellent. And... Uh, so, you know, so that from that sort of instant, you, you get like a gut feeling that you get a good, good, good feeling about the place. And then I, they actually brought me back down again um, with my family um, and the manager. He took us out for a meal and stuff. And, you know, that having that sort of personal touch um, with someone's family and that, you know, it sort of goes a long way. Like, and... Uh, you know what? I, I got a, another obviously good feeling about about the club and his plans for me. He he was like crystal clear and and what he what he sort of seen the future for me and uh you know he he thought at that time that he could help me and to be honest he he has obviously delivered and helped me massively. Um, so I I just thought at that time it was the right stage in my career. Um, they make the move, and um, you know the feeling I got about the club um, when I went to visit. Uh, it was I always got a good feeling about Tala, to be honest. Um, when I was playing at Derry, even I used to love uh, used to love playing away in Tala because it's the best stadium in the league by a mile, best pitch in the league, and uh, you really can get yourself up for playing a game of football. And you know it was a start a new chapter for me. And you know, I, one that I, I thoroughly enjoy, enjoyed. Um, but like as I say, the, the gaffer and McPhail, I met them, and uh, they were they were both excellent. Like, yeah, Stephen recently did a press conference just ahead of the the league there, and he mentioned that um, he basically changed your position. He said you were kind of more of an attacking sort of midfielder, and now you the way he played, you was more box to box. And he was raving about you, even though you, you've obviously just, you've obviously just transferred away. But he was raving about how much you've improved since he kind of had you in, and and then he kind of made those little changes to your game. And he said you went on to probably be the best box box midfielder in the country. His words that, now. That, 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 <laughs> I know that that uh, it's obviously when there's a, a manager, you know, of like Stephen Bradley's quality, saying stuff like that. Um, it's obviously good to hear uh, about yourself, but you know himself and the staff around him in terms of Steve McPhail, um, Glenn Cronin, Darren Dillon. Um, they when I when I moved and I remember going in uh, that preseason and you know they they sort of helped me change my mindset and change my view of the game. Uh, at Derry, maybe I. Wanted to cheat a wee bit and maybe score a few more goals and um, not do as much of the defensive side of the game. And, you know, it might look good in your highlight reel and stuff like that. Uh, you're scoring a few more goals and stuff. But, I mean, if you want to win things, um, you have to do the dirty side of the, the game. And uh, my objective when I signed for Rovers was to go and win things. Um, and, you know, if I wanted to do that, 
I knew I had to listen and buy into what they were doing and I think I, I fully did that from I went in and you know for a few weeks if if I maybe didn't track a runner or um didn't make a tackle or something like that, they they were quick enough to tell you. So, you know, they, they've installed a, a very good culture at the club. Um hard working culture, but uh it's it's very enjoyable. It was very enjoyable to to be about and uh I think, you know, like I, I have to give them massive credit for that for you know, as you say, maybe changing my sort of position, but wouldn't say, you know, as such position, it's sort of my my view in the game. Like. Yeah, well, well, he had just kind of said that he, he altered your position. That's what that's what he said on the the press conference. But um, just talk me but through your kind of... Whatever, whatever he says, he's right. <laughs> okay, yeah, we won't argue with him. <laughs> Um, but just to, um, on your time at Rovers, you've obviously had, I know you spoke there about kind of not getting too high and too low, but you had a, a lot of highs at, at Shamrock Rovers at the time you were there. You joined, obviously, similar time to Jack. And, um, I mean, the two years came straight into the team and just slotted in straight away. I have to say, from going to a lot of Shamrock Rovers games in the time spell in which you both kind of came in and the difference and shift in mentality from yourselves, and obviously there's other characters in that, Dressed room, the likes of Joey O'Brien. I know he's hugely popular in the dressing room yeah. there, just in terms of his mentality and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure there's others that you will name as well. But just kind of the football you play and just the way I suppose Stephen, in many ways, he changes. Uh, the, just the way he, his in-game management, the way he changes games, you can see formations changes and stuff like that. And he has so many players that are so versatile that they can come in and play so many different positions. I suppose in that sense, I can kind of get what what you're saying in terms of your view on the game and how, I suppose, you have to adapt to different situations all the time because he's always changing the in, in the game, you know? All right, well, like, you know, I go back to last year, um, you know, you're playing in a system where I would play alongside Gary O'Neill and um, with Jack in the number 10 position, but it's, it was never a rigid system, you know. It was always uh, it was always a bit of balance in the, in the midfield, and you know if Jack drops in, which he liked to do and, and get on the ball and stuff, you know one of us have to go higher, and that would have more times than not uh, been me in terms of using my legs. Um, but in terms of fitness, it was, uh, and I've got a good relationship with Jack. You know he would drop in, get the ball. I'd run past him and then we lost the ball. I'd run back past him again to go and defend. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I think the blend that he got, the manager got at the time, you know, and the and the change room was excellent in terms of young, hungry players along with, you know, experienced players. And, uh, you know, the, the, the dressing room was, was great and everyone got on with each other and stuff. Um, like as you said yourself, there's people like Joey O'Brien, um, Ronan Finn, Alan Manis, Aaron Green, Greg Bulger, uh, Danny Lafferty came in then. You know, really experienced players, whether that be in the League of Ireland or else in, in England. Um, so th- there was there was a lot of quality in the squad, uh, along like you know mixture the mixture between the the youth sort of younger players and the older players you know it was a it was a great environment to be in yeah and i suppose the the rise of the likes of pico and lee grace and stuff like that as well who, who really blossomed in that time as well when, when you kind of came in but uh just as we're going through shamrock rovers and rather going through the whole time there just kind of just on that sorry man. just just on that pico, pico lopez is an absolute machine he's one of the, the fittest players i've ever seen involved um and what a character he is and that them two i i didn't mention the two boys him and lee like you know him you, like if you if you look at our sort of success over them years it was built on a platform of not conceding goals and uh you know whoever it was that played across the back them two joey Dean scales uh sean kavna finner slotted in at right back at times you know well, he d- adapted and the like a wing back last year. You know yeah. that that sort of base um, defensively gave uh, 
gave us as midfielders and the attacking players a, a really, really solid base to go and play from. And I think uh, I, w- I would like to obviously give them boys massive credit. And to be honest with you, I, I think uh, the relationships that sort of built from the past few years, that'll only continue to get stronger this year. And I'm sure they'll, um, they'll have that, that solid base to play from again. Yeah, just on the, the, the times at Shamrock Rovers, because obviously you've signed for Hearts since, uh, but just your, your fondest memories, because I imagine you have um, a lot of really good memories, you know, between the FAI Cup final, um, playing against AC Milan in Europe, you know, playing against, uh, was it Limassol uh, at Tala Stadium and just kind of the scenes then, the penalty shootout that <laughs> never ended. Uh, there's been a lot of, I suppose, good times at Shamrock Rovers. Obviously, um you know, you'll have your own kind of favourites, but uh, just f- if I kind of think it about off the top of my head, you've had some really good moments playing for Shamrock Rovers. I know there's there is loads to be fair. Um, if I was the top off and pick one, that would probably uh, be scoring the penalty in the cup final uh, when the stadium was packed. Uh, that would that would probably be no- number one. Um, you know, playing the likes of AC Milan has to be right up there. Uh, when I was coming back from injury, you know, in uh, the first sort of European games, and uh, I think I got took off from one of the games and the whole stadium was, was singing the song. Uh, you know, I was just looking around and thinking, you know, what a special place this, this is. They, they play football. Um, the fans, the fans there, you know, it, it was kind of like a pity last year that we, we won the league and there was no fans in the stadium because the place would have been bouncing every week. And, um, you know, I have, like, sort of thinking off the top of my head, uh, there has been so, so many good times at the club and it's hard to sort of put put them all in the, you know, what, what your favourite... I can pick a clear favourite and that was... Obviously, the the FA Cup final on scoring scoring that penalty, um, but you know, after that, you've obviously got a league trophy in there, uh, the European nights, um, a few of the goals that I scored, um, and then you know some of the some of the football that we played. Like, there's games, you know, that are just enjoyable to play in because you're getting loads of touches of the ball and. Uh, it was just a, a really good time for my in my football career, and you know that that came down to a lot of things. Um, mentioned the manager and the coaching staff, and obviously the the your teammates as well. You know because they're the ones that you're playing me every week, and and then uh, I had a I had a good relationship with the the Rover fans. They they took to me straight away when I came from Derry, and. I think we were away away to Fan Harps and Aaron Gre- we were in a huddle before the game and Aaron Green said they're they're singing a song about you and I was only there you know a few weeks and I said no I can't be right and of course it obviously it obviously wasn't you know when you when you hear that and the the fans you, you build a sort of good relationship with the, the fans it's it helped me settle quite quickly you know yeah you obviously went on to have a great time at Shamrock obviously it ultimately led to getting a call up, what was that like and how long had Stephen Kenny been, you know, in touch with you regarding because I know there was a little bit of a an issue with the international clearance and stuff like that. That had obviously came true and you were able to play. So how long was Stephen kinda I suppose courting you to to let you know that he was interested and you'd been watching it? Because he was at that stage Jack was getting a lot of international recognition and stuff like that. So, you know, a lot of Irish eyes, I suppose, were watching League of Ireland and especially Sean McRovers at that stage. Mm. I well, like the in terms of the clearance, um, that had been going on for me for you know a few years to be honest. Uh, and then I kind of heard that maybe I was going to get a call up, but the clearance hadn't gone through. Um, and then obviously it went it went through before I actually got called up. Um, <clears throat> and I, I just. It wasn't actually Stephen that uh, rang me to tell me that I, I got a call up. Uh, me and Graham Burke, we sort of we, we went into training on a Monday, or I think it was a Monday. Went into training, and um, 
we were about to start the rondos and the manager came out and just said uh just want to stop and uh Aaron and Graham you have got called into the squad and I was thinking you know what squad he said obviously the Ireland squad and I was absolutely buzzing um you know one of the proudest well it is the proudest moment for me um and me football career you know to, to get, get an international call up is an amazing feeling um and uh get on about the squad and you know see what the standards like and see see what you're how you fit into that type of standard and stuff uh it was a great experience over the the few days and um it's obviously on the bench uh didn't come on so uh it's something that made me hungry to sort of kick on and and try and get a cap in the future yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, did, did you, you obviously got a taste for, for what it's like. Now, you'll, you'll obviously be wanting to get yourself back in there for future squads and stuff like that. Since that has happened, you know, a lot's changed and stuff like that. You've now moved to Hearts. How did that move come about? What was it that made you want to go to Hearts? And um, I suppose your aspirations there for the next couple of years. Uh, like, just on the international football, you know, it's obviously something that, every footballer strives towards to play for their country and you know you, you want to do it but you sort of have to put it back to your head because um i mean you're you're not going to get international call-ups unless you're you're doing well at your club so i think you know you just have to focus on on your club football and and see see sort of what happens from there um and obviously i i went in the pre-season like pre-pre-season Doing gym work with uh, Rovers this year, uh, and then basically got a phone call on. I kind of heard about it a bit um, during the week, and then I got a phone call on the Sunday before deadline day. Uh, they say, "Pack a bag, um, it's sort of happening." And uh, the move to Hearts was one that really excited me, and I uh, mentioned it before. Uh, in terms of leaving Derry to go to Rovers, um, you know it's it's something going from Rovers to Hearts. I I seen that it's it's a progression in my football career, and uh, I think it's I, I thought at that time you know the best thing for me to do was to to move, and it happened really quick to be honest. Got a phone call on the Sunday, and um, got told basically pack your bag, and I mean, you know Hearts is one of the biggest clubs in Scotland. Um, so when I heard it, it really excited me uh, to get to get over here and get involved with uh, the squad and stuff. So flew over on Monday morning, got the contract and stuff signed, and um, I've been basically straight in training with the boys since, and uh, it's been really good. Uh, it's a massive club. Um, the club have been the boys have been doing well this year already uh, in the Scottish Championship and. The aim obviously has to be to, to try and go and win the, the championship and get back into the top flight of Scottish football. And then, you know, going from that, you want to be competing at the top end of the Scottish football. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of quality here in the squad. Um, and, you know, hopefully over the next few months and uh, like common years, obviously, that I can add something to that. And, uh, I'm confident that I can because I've I've settled in quite quickly here and uh, I'm enjoying it already. Yeah, because you're kind of at that age now. I know. Um, I hope you don't mind me saying it, but you're obviously expecting a baby now. Your missus is going to be coming over and stuff like that. So you're kind of at an age now where, obviously, you need to have financial security as well as that, and obviously wanting to be playing and enjoying your football. Because as I say, you're 26 now and you're real kind of age that you need to be kicking on in terms of your progression so I think it's a natural fit in that sense and if you're speaking about Hearts you know they played Celtic in the cup final there a few months back and you know yeah. they were competing with Celtic so it shows that if they go up next season which in, in the situation it looks like right now they probably he's probably will get promoted but it shows that you can compete with you know teams in the top end of the Scottish League anyway you know at my age uh you're you're right, you know, and and the things that you've said there, um, but you know, I'm like being coming twenty six in the summer, and you know, after 
that kind of age, you know, you, you can you can miss a window um, in the in the League of Ireland in terms of uh, getting a move to go and, and test yourself elsewhere. And uh, you know, I, I I had offers like before um, to go to other clubs, um, but it didn't really interest me. Uh, I wanted to stay at Shamrock Rovers until I thought that the right opportunity came up. Um, so I did that. And then when when I heard uh, a massive club like Hearts obviously was coming in, then, you know, it was, uh, for me, it was a no-brainer at, at this stage of my career to, to go and kick on and test myself in Scotland. And sort of, uh, it's, just, it's just really exciting to have a new challenge. Um, obviously, as I say, the boys have been doing well. But, um, you know, I, I obviously coming in, have to go and stamp a bit of authority and try and try and get myself in the team and then uh, when I do get my chance stay in the team basically and I just I just as you say thought it was a good fit for me and um, I've been over here two weeks now and uh, I've really enjoyed it so far so long may that continue and I've got I'm still actually in a hotel at the minute but I've got a place sorted so I'm sure by next week when Ellen comes over and that I'll be well settled and uh, ready to kick on for the rest of the season. Yeah, it'll be a nice little celebration at the end of the season. If you get promotion, obviously you'll have your, your baby then at that stage. Um, all going well, of course. Um, that would be the ideal scenario. Uh, definitely. That um, you know, Obviously, that's the aim for the club. Um, there's no shying away from the fact of that that's the aim. And... Uh, with the quality that's in the dressing room, um, that has to be the aim. And uh, with the the baby coming in May, um, I think the season is due to finish maybe a week before the due date they're on. So uh, it's sort of perfect timing, really. Um, so I may just get all the sleep I can now because uh, during the off season this year, there'll be many sleepless nights, I'd say. Yeah, well, listen, Aaron, I actually kept you probably 20 minutes longer than, than I intended, but it's been absolutely brilliant listening to your story and kind of hearing it from your own point of view and stuff like that and how your kind of football journey took you from, from an early age to, to where you are now. So uh, I just want to say a huge thanks for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. No bother, Paul. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah, want to wish you all the best for the rest of the season and um, hopefully everything that you want to happen will happen all going well. So thanks again, and uh, I'm sure I'll catch up with you soon again. Cheers, Paul. Come on.